Everything else going? All right. So we are, where are we? What are we doing? Let's see. Abraham. Abraham. Thank God. Abraham. We're dealing with, with yeah. And, um, and that's what it says behind us. So this is number 40. Okay. But it's not 40 of Abraham. We did a lot of other teaching, right? Or is this all still Abraham? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know, people are considered really wise when they can say stuff in a succinct manner. <laughs> so that makes me really dumb. <laughs> All right, we are in Genesis 16 <clears throat> and um, well, let's just say this. I mean, you prior to this class, maybe prior to last time that we shared, which would have been 39, it would have been, we talked about <clears throat> Hagar. You remember that? Talked about Hagar. And um, probably before that class, the primary thing that you knew about her was that she was the one who had Ishmael, right? Okay. But in that last class, number 39, <laughs> We discovered some other things. Do y'all remember that? Oh, you do? Okay, so tell me, somebody tell me one of the things that we discovered in that class. Kelly, your hand's always first. No. No. <laughs> okay, if you're going to be the only hand, then yes. We discovered that Hagar, though she married. One thing. One thing, though. Go ahead. That's, just take the class, brother. <laughs> that's, that's what, you know, that's what we wanted, amen? <clears throat> that's what we wanted, okay. I saw another hand, was that your hand? Uh, okay, Lindsay? She's one of the, uh, only ones that God, one, one of the only ones that God uh, one of the only ones that he addressed directly. Okay, so what else? God Mallory? Went, um, Abraham and Sarah's camp and went to find um, Hagar to check out her spirit and situation. Amen. God left the camp of Abraham and Sarah and literally the promised land. And he went to check out her spirit in the whole matter. Okay, good. Somebody else? There was, we really hit a lot of stuff. He, God called her by her name. The only one up to that point, literally, that he said, Hagar. Wow, okay. Anything else? Okay, Mallory again. He named Ishmael. He named, he named Ishmael. And Ishmael's name is God Hears. And when God did that, God did that in an honorable way in the sense of Hagar, this is proof that I hear. Is that something? I mean, these are major things. They are major things. Uh, Lindsay? Yeah, the Lord um, blessed Hagar because of her spirit in spite of what it would mean for the seed in the future, like the conflict and what it would cost and what it would cost. Okay, God blessed, yeah, God blessed Hagar with Ishmael regardless of, of course, that's more of a, a much more call it on uh, on God Himself more than Hagar, but yeah, knowing full well that there was going to be war with the seed seeds. Yeah. Hagar is the only one other than the patriarchs to receive the promise of the seed. Yeah, there is some other promise. 
Yeah, it's very similar. And with that, you know, when we say seed, you know, many times we think plural, but, um, and he did, God did say, you know, I will multiply thy seed. And it was sounded just like Abraham. I think that's what you were saying, is that it sounded just like the promise to Abraham almost. <clears throat> okay, let me just look here, see if I got... Okay, so I did have, at the start of this, I put, why did God show up and help Hagar? And um, we, I think we know part of the reason, because I really went over it a lot. But um, maybe you remember when um, this first started between Sarah and Hagar. Remember, and they're, they're, you know, there's this conflict between them. And Hagar gets upset, I mean, Sarah gets upset with Hagar, but goes to Abraham. Remember that? And she, she's, you know, uppity and got her feathers ruffled. And um, she says to, to Abraham, the Lord judge between me and thee. Now, she was talking about Abraham but I think the Lord went there to judge between Sarah and Hagar, too. Because the real issue really wasn't between her and him. The real issue was between Sarah and Hagar. And I think the Lord took her up on her words. Be careful what you say. <laughs> but in the long run, in the long run, it was good, you know, on certain fronts. Okay, and then, of course, the, uh, uh, the main thing, why is God doing all this? Because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. In other words, he's doing it <clears throat> because he heard her affliction. And, and remember, in, in uh, Genesis 18, we're going to see a similar thing where God comes down again. I mean, because you don't really see him coming down a lot, but he'll come down for sure in that situation. And he will go check out Sodom and Gomorrah to see according to the cries that he has heard. That's a big deal. Come on. He's going to check it out. He says that. That he's going to do it based on the cries that he has heard to see if it's correct. All right. So that's why he's showing up with Hagar. Hagar. Because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Okay. So, what, again, you know, we, we said this, um, but he's showing, he's showing up to check her heart, to check her spirit in relation to the oppression. And that was said. But, but I think it's... I don't know how much we fully realize that. And, I, you know, it's, it's really a big deal with the Lord. It's so big that he will come down and check it out to see of what nature it is, of what kind it is. Okay. Kelly? Right. Kelly said that, that I'd mentioned that <clears throat> when God questioned her, she didn't, she didn't bring up, you know, uh, what Sarah did to her in a bad attitude or even what Sarah did to her. Uh, and she didn't bring up all the specifics of the thing. Well, here's my side and here's their side and, you know, and this, is, this isn't right and all this kind of stuff, which I'm telling you. You don't know. You don't know God if you if you freely just rail like that. <clears throat> so, um, so the Lord looked at that because He came to check that out. That He goes, okay, you know. But He said, let's follow through with this. You go back and submit yourself to her. And then I will multiply your seed and I will, you know, 
I will, and all these blessings and all this personal thing of calling her by name and coming there and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so, all right, so with that in mind, with all of these things that, that God did special, really special, many of them only to Hagar, with all of that, let's now look at verse 12 and look at what Ishmael turns out to be like. Ready? Verse 12. This is 16, 12. Uh, and I think this is a slightly, just slightly different. Uh, okay. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Okay. So... <clears throat> That doesn't sound very rewarding, does it? You're going, well, you're going to give me a bunch of seed, but it's going to be, look what they're like. Well, you know, God judges, you know, we always say, well, um, well let me just use this, and this is not a reflection on Jim, but. Well, my pastor said in a sermon that so-and-so, so-and-so. And you're standing before God and you go, so, you know, it's his fault. And God will go, well, where's Jim? <laughs> Meaning, you're going to have to stand here on your own. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is your deal. You have been made queen for a day. And this is your special time because regardless of that, whatever anybody else did, this is you now. And a lot of times we don't even realize us because we just realize someone else and what they did and what they uh, um, said or, you know, how they hurt us or whatever. But the very story of Hagar says, it makes a difference to God how you respond to that. You know, He'll take care of that stuff. Amen? He'll take care of that stuff. You be right with him. You love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and you know what I mean. And your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> so, um, so I wrote down here, what will God make him? He will be a wild ass of a man. And I, I, that's my translation because I got that out. I think I might have written it slightly off. No, no, I think the word is in there. Okay. Okay. I, what? Okay, so the English Standard Version says he will be a wild donkey of a man, okay? And I have he will be a wild ass of a man. Anyway, uh, uh, he will be a wild ass of a man whose hand shall be against everyone. Okay. Okay. This doesn't sound like the Lord. <clears throat> okay, of course it doesn't. He's not the promised seed that's that could be talking about you i mean and may, you understand why the context i'm putting that in and that is it's the seed it's christ that counts it's that's the thing that's important you know it's important that you be in the seed it's important that the seed eventually manifest through you but it's in this case just because God made all of those promises to Hagar didn't mean that he was going to turn out and be like Jesus or whatever. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> it's the Messiah, Ishmael, the wild ass of a man. Anyway. <clears throat> um, uh, I think that I think that Hagar wasn't so much in on the reality of 
what God had been speaking to Abraham. Uh, Sarah would be in on it somewhat because he would talk to her and tell her and assume that she would bear the seed for 10 years before this all happened, right? You remember the timetable? 10 years. So, <clears throat> but Hagar doesn't know that. And God's not dealing with her seed except as a, um, to show his, can I say, the blessing upon her attitude or whatever? On her spirit, you know, return and submit. Um, but that didn't mean he was blessing her with the seed. So that's a big difference. And I think we'll get into that later on. I don't even remember if it's in chapter 16 or not. Uh, but we will get into that and we will, we will begin to examine the difference between Abraham's covenant and the one that he said, well, you know, you could say, well, let's just say Hagar's covenant, Ishmael's covenant. Or was it a covenant? Was it just promises? You know, whereas one definitely, you know, is a covenant based on the promised seed. Okay, so you tell me which one you want to be involved in. No, I want to be, I want to be involved in the one that is not about me. That's not about my righteousness. That's not about my goodness or my abilities or my whatever. It's about another life. <clears throat> you know, I was thinking today of. You know, how the Lord is. I was just going, you know, the Lord's really funny because he made, he made this world and then he made my body and then he put a life in that body and then he put another life in that life. I'm going, you know, I'm a stack of pancakes. <laughs> which is probably not what you would have said immediately after realizing that. Well, since we're on that, this thought came to me today. <clears throat> also, I know, you, you, you all cringe when I say that. But I was thinking about um, 1 John three sixteen, which is a great scripture. Um, By this perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And I thought, those who don't do that, they have autism. <laughs> we ought, but they... <laughs> anyway, I don't know. <laughs> don't, you know, just, just pray. Just pray. That's all I can say. Just pray for me. Pray for my mind, my weirdness. But I... It, it's not that bad in the spirit, is it? It's just a word thing, but the reality of it is a lot of Christians have autism. Anyway, okay. Um, his hand will be against everyone. So I wrote, why would God have a hand in bringing about such a person? What would cause such a man to be brought into existence by God? Okay? Now remember, everything that God said to Hagar was to Hagar because of what she did. But this guy is going to stand alone too. Right? All right. So... I mean, and I wrote that in all sincerity when I was working on these notes and stuff. And if I, if I could find my place, I would just go through the, these notes real quick and show you. But I, it's a long time ago. And I just, I remember the Lord sharing with me about Hagar. And I was going, oh, my God. He's, you know, it occurred to me, it's the only one he's really speaking directly to. And it, and then I would discover the next thing. You know, he called her by name. And then, you know, I was just kept going. It just felt like a lot of stuff coming down 
that had never really happened before with a woman, and I'm going, you know, this just seems crazy to me, but it was like crazy cool because of her spirit in that situation. And then the next verse is, and he's going to be a wild ass of a man, and every man his hand against every man, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm going, what? Well, I wrote it just like that as soon as I read the next verse. What would cause God to make such, to bring such a man into existence? So I wrote, after all, the Lord could have let Hagar die in the wilderness before Ishmael was even born and effectively ended all of the centuries of agony to God's people before it began. All right. So uh, it also says in verse 12, and he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. All right. Well, now, again, my mind goes places some don't, but I'm, I'm, I was having a hard time with that. I'm going, well, you know, when you're in a family, you're in, you grow up in the presence of all your brethren, you know. So, you know, I, I question things at times, and it's good because the Holy Spirit goes, okay, good, because I was thinking of something else, you know what I mean, if he does that. You know, I really had something else in mind. Thanks for asking. So, um, so I wrote, let's see. Uh, uh, let me read that last verse. And shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. So I wrote, what did Ishmael's seed become? I said, but we are not just talking about a man, but a nation. When you talk about Ishmael, you're talking about a nation. If you talk about Isaac, or if you talk about Israel, you're talking about a nation, you, you see. And uh, this is also a description of the ones God will multiply out from Ishmael in order to oppress Israel all their days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Okay. Why would God want to oppress Israel? Why would God want to oppress you? <laughs> you know, why would God allow that stuff? You know, he has a purpose in all of it. You know, all things work together for good. You know, but that good is, yeah, ultimately it's being conformed to his image so that the father is getting the son out of us. Okay. It's not that he goes, okay, Jews, you're the promised seed, and you're everything I want. Don't even worry about it. You know what I mean? I mean, that's why some people look at it. You know, you're the promised seed, and don't, don't even worry about it. I'll always fight for you. I'll always, you know, you won't ever have to worry. I'll take care of everything. <clears throat> um, But the scriptures say, as you know, in Galatians, that he saith not unto seeds as of many, but unto thy seed, which seed is Christ. And, the, and the, that the promises are to the seed. Okay? But we are the bearers of that seed. And guess what? Believe it or not, that seed has obstacles in us, we're some of the biggest obstacles that he has in the earth. You know, our, our great wisdom, you know, our vast wisdom of things. When, you know, you know one of the things I'm going to love about the teaching First Peter is <laughs> to show that our vast wisdom is like, we, we miss it, just totally miss it. We have to hear Again and again, you know, I always think of the blind man, you know, Lord touched the blind man. He said, what do you see? And I, he said, I see men as trees walking. So Jesus gives him a second touch and he says, what do you see? And he says, all things clear, you know, now I can see clearly. What is that trying to teach us? It's trying to teach us that 
just because the Lord touched us once doesn't mean we don't go back. We don't say, I, I, I'd like more clarity, you know. Oh, I see Jesus, and he looks like a tree, you know, not the tree, but a tree walking, <laughs> you know. Um, instead of coming back, and, and I mean, see, a blind man will come back. And I, you say, well, he only has to, you only have to come once if you're a blind man and he'll touch you. Ah, but spiritually blind, you, you constantly need his touch. You need his eyes. You need, you need that which flows from him. And see, the difference is he's not outside of us touching us. He's inside of us. And we're walking around with him, never asking him to touch our eyes. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's like if he was standing right there, we would. And we'd say, oh, Jesus, and do this, and oh, Jesus, and whatever. But he's on the inside of us. So we assume that any scripture that we've read and figure we understand what it means, that's it. We move on to the next scripture. Right? You're not mad at me for saying this, are you? Ishmael, are you? Are you on me? <laughs> Some of you are going, no, I'm not mad. And so I said, Ishmael, say, well, now I'm mad. <laughs> but I mean, in a sense, folks, we are Ishmael, and Christ is the seed that is within us, and that's the promised seed, and we don't have to be a wild ass of a man or woman or whatever, a banshee, a wild banshee. Anybody ever get called that as a kid? Good, because you deserved it. Uh, in fact, it's making me cry right now. All right, so... We're not talking about a man, but a nation. This is also a description of the ones God will multiply out from Ishmael in order to oppress Israel all their days. Because, think about it. The Ishmaelites, their hand is still against everybody. Including, I don't know how much you know about the Middle East, but it's not, you know... It's, it's not like, well, if you're an Arab or a Muslim, then you get along. Okay, anybody know the difference between Iran and Iraq? You know the difference, anybody know that? Okay, okay. Uh, tribes in Africa, same thing. Tribes that were here, the Native Americans, same thing. There was all that kind of stuff. Fighting and wars, between, you know, America and Germany or, or Britain and Germany or, you know, there is, you know, there is meant to be division because it's not Christ. They can't help it. We will do that. We will do stuff. And you'll say, well, I would never do that. You probably do it to people all the time and don't even know it. Never really would face that you do, but you do, you do, you do, you do stuff to people. And, you know, I mean, I was a hippie and I remember we had kind of a unspoken code. And as far as I was concerned, I was serious about that code. I, I wanted, I... I wanted there to be peace and love and, you know, all of those things. And it sounds right and it sounds good and it is right and it is good except for Jesus is our peace and Jesus is, our, you know, the love or, or God is our love. And, and I, then I ended up doing something that totally broke what the spirit of that thing was. And it broke me and it's actually one of the main things that brought me to God, brought me to the Lord. Because it put me in a broken state, and then the Lord was able to do what he was going to do. But, you know, so, so before that, I said, well, you know, the man, I don't know, anybody, raise your hand if you know who the man is. Okay, good for y'all. <laughs> 
the man, I, we're not for the man. We're not going to serve the man, you know what I mean? And we're not going to, everything, you know, is plastic, man, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and all that. You know, you people are just plastic. But, you know, we were just as bad. There was nothing holy about us. We had more fun, but, <laughs> but there's nothing holy about us, you know. So this is a whole nation, and their hand is not just against other nations, but against themselves. I mean, he dwells with his brethren, and their hands are against everyone else. Well, that would be within the, the brotherhood, too. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so God will multiply out from Ishmael in order to oppress Israel all their days. They will be the same kind of seed as Ishmael. This can be seen in the fact that Ishmael will only have one brother. Speaking of Ishmael, it says, he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. So I was just alluding to the fact that maybe He's right there in the midst still of Israel, still. You could say Israel's right there in the midst of them, but I mean, they're still all there together. And there's still a lot of trouble going on, okay? Well, what, you know, what's the answer to the Middle East? What's, what's the way to get it peaceful? Give everybody a puppy. <laughs> That's about some of the things we come up with, you know what I mean? I know what will do it. You know? No, no. You give us all a puppy, I'll kill your puppy, and then you'll go after mine. You know what I mean? <laughs> that didn't change anything. Maybe for like 10 seconds. Everybody went, oh, you know, and then it's like, hey, I want your puppy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so of, of Ishmael, it's not just speaking of his own seed, but Isaac, his brother. He'll dwell in the midst of his brethren. Ishmael, as a nation, will dwell in the presence of his brethren, Israel, to test for the firstborn. <laughs> yeah. There's still one family. This happened before they were born, before, before Ishmael was even born. This whole thing with, with uh, Hagar, that all happened before he was born. And, and Isaac was on the way, but it would be a while, right? But then when they get born, you, you know the story, we'll get to it. Still got some trouble, okay? Why? Because God just likes stirring up trouble. No, there may be the God of this world, you know, you know, your Lord, Lord Satan, <laughs> Lord Vader. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so to test for the firstborn, that's so much greater than God be good to us because we're your people, you know, because you can not be his people. You know, and he can make you his people. And you can be his people, and you're not my people anymore. But he will always have the son. He'll always honor the son. He will always love the son. Yeah. You make your life and everything about you, you're in trouble. I mean, you're, I'm talking about your Christianity, your best. You're, you know, you're doing everything right and being able to look at somebody who doesn't do everything right. Well then you're Ishmael, because that's what Ishmael will do. Do you remember the stories? This is, I'm not making this up. This is what he does. Okay, well, so how does Isaac respond is the question. All right. So we know, we know, we know that when they get down the road, when Abraham gets down the road with Isaac, when, when he's had time to, to uh, hear from the Lord in relationship to Isaac and everything and to get through some things because they've got, they got to go through some stuff. I mean, from the point that, 
that Isaac is born, there, there's stuff between all there until Genesis 22. And then Genesis 22, there's peace. I mean, read the story. There's not, there's not rebellion. There's not questioning God. There's just take thou thy son, thine only son, thine son whom thou lovest, and offer him for a holocaust unto me. You, you know the word holocaust, right? It's a, it's a, what is it, burnt offering. It, that's the actual Hebrew name for the burnt offering that is so commonly called the burnt offering. The name of it, their name for it was always been Holocaust. <clears throat> I found that interesting that when the German Holocaust happened, that they called it a Holocaust instead of a massacre. You know? They said, we're not going to just die as people that have been in, in, impounded and, and beaten, you know, and burned to ashes. Those ashes will be a burnt offering. They'll be a holocaust. That's better than some of us. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's better than some of us. <clears throat> All right. So uh, the next title I have is Ishmael is not the firstborn. And we talked about that a little bit tonight, actually. But it's, it's important to realize that if you're not the first, if you're not going to be the firstborn, you know, uh, God will use you to help develop the firstborn in someone else. You know, I wish I had my guitar case here because I have a great bumper sticker. And I always quote it wrong, but it says something like, if I can't be... You know, if I can't be, you know, everything that you want, that's not the words, but then let me be a warning. <laughs> you know, let, let me just be a warning of what you don't want to be, you know. <clears throat> well, I, I don't want to be a warning, trust me. I want the firstborn, and I want him because I want him. Not just because I want security or I want, you know, all the things that, that do come. They do. They do. They come. And they come from him. But it's only they come from him because we're joined to him. And <clears throat> so Ishmael, though Abram's son, is not the firstborn. But why specifically? Why specifically is he not the firstborn? Okay? Well, you can say, well, Hagar or da 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 da. No, no, there's a real practical reason. <clears throat> we will give other reasons later, but one reason is that his hand will be against every man. In other words, though he only exists because he was delivered from oppression by God's hand through Hagar's cry, yet he will grow up to become an oppressor. The very thing that was happening to Hagar through Sarah, Ishmael is going to become that. You know, that was a long sentence. You want me to read it again? Yeah. Okay. I'll read. Um, <clears throat> Ishmael, though Abraham's son, is not the firstborn, but why specifically? <clears throat> uh, one reason is that his hand will be against every man. In other words, though he only exists because he was delivered from oppression, from oppression by God's hand through Hagar's cry, yet he will grow up to become an oppressor. Okay? In other words, the very reason by which God delivered him was because he and Hagar were oppressed by Sarah. But he will become one who oppresses. All right. So, and this is not uncommon. Um, uh, I was raised in a, in a home when I was at home. 
when I wasn't in the orphanage, I was raised in a home where both of my parents were alcoholics. But they weren't just alcoholics, they were mean drunks, especially my father or stepfather. <clears throat> mean drunks. And, um, and the amount of cruelty to children, uh, we had three brothers and two sisters, so there were six of us, which reminds me. My youngest sister, Bibi, is um, just been diagnosed with a rare form of cancer, and she's in stage three, so please be in prayer for my little sister. Um, and like a million other homes, you know, we weren't the only family that suffered through that kind of stuff. You know, and I'm sure there's worse, you know. But for, uh, for us, you know, a lot of it was really a nightmare type situation. I mean, really, I mean, you're just little kids. You don't even know how to handle some of that. It's just un unbelievable. Um, but you can grow up and you can, you can be oppressed as a little kid and something begins to be formed in you where you just, you, you get mean-spirited. You know what I mean? I mean, and then you're going to react that way. And then you're going to, but you're going to do it not because I want to be like dad. You're going to do it because I hate dad. You, you know what I mean? Because I hate him. And so then, but you can't take it out on dad usually. You know what I mean? You'd usually never get that chance. So you take it out on, well, your wife or your kids or everybody else, the people you work with or whatever. And the cycle just keeps going. The cycle keeps going, just like what we just read. The cycle will keep going. Um, and that's because why? Because we're not handling that stuff right. And even, I mean, uh, between my brothers and sisters and everything, I don't know how well everyone else handled it. I know one thing. I got to come to the Lord pretty early. And I, I was, I'm extremely blessed that that happened. And eventually, by the grace of God, got to lead my stepfather to Jesus. Um, trying to reverse the cycle. Trying to reverse the cycle with my own kids. I didn't, you know, folks, I was far from a perfect father. But in my mind, what I worked on was, number one, I didn't want to drink. Number two, I didn't want to slap my kids around. Number three, I didn't want to use verbal abuse. I, you understand, there's a, there's a role here that starts happening. You go, I don't want this, and I don't want that, and I don't want this, and that. And you, you, you know, especially if you're in the Lord, you can follow through with that, you know, to a major degree. But there's always other stuff wrong with you, and I know that, and I don't. So if anybody ever thought I was really a great dad, I don't think I probably was, but the Lord saved me from being what my, my dad was, you know. But he also saved me from not hating what my dad and my stepfather did, you know. I even got a chance to witness to my real father. He didn't want nothing to do with the Lord. Didn't want anything to do with it. Neither did my stepfather until a certain time. But those things are all in, in, in the father's hands and the son is in us. And, and if we want to see, you know, we, we may not be able to change the world, but we can change us by Christ. You know what I mean? And there's, and, and see, it's almost stupid for me now. I'm sorry, and I shouldn't use that kind of language on that. But it's almost stupid for me to go and try to change the world, you know, be a missionary and do some great thing like that until you got some things settled in you. I mean, I was a missionary, and I've seen missionaries on the mission field. I've seen them really full of themselves. And, you know, what? <laughs> most of you that have been here for a while have heard me say, well, you know, if you are messed up here, a plane trip to your foreign field is not going to change you to make you a saint, you know. You're going to bring all that with you, okay? So, while we will never be totally conformed to the image of Christ, we can get down the road enough 
to present Christ, to present him. We not just, not just speak, not just talk, but to present Christ and realize how desperate the world needs this lamb Jesus, how desperate they need this. And, and you know, you talk about the Middle East, I got news for you. Jews need him just as much as the Muslims. There's no, in God's eyes, there's no difference in that sense. In that sense, there's no difference. They, they need the same life, you know. So, um, so my reason for saying that he's not the firstborn, or my first reason, I'll give some later, is that his hand will be against every man. Does that sound like Christ in you, the hope of glory? <laughs> you know, that's not it. It's not it. You could look at him and say, hmm, not the seed. Right? Amen. And that's the way God does it. God doesn't go, well, you know, I remember the time by the river, by the Jordan River when Ishmael sat on a stump. And he prayed, and it was beautiful. And I'm convinced that he, he didn't go by our words and our, you know, our religious things that we do, and we think he does. We, uh, you know, we had a great Sunday, didn't we? People going down to the altar. I went, I, you know, great Sunday of being with the Lord in that sense as a body. Um, but it's possible to go down here and go, I hope everybody sees me, you know. You know, okay, okay, there's one going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Are you laughing because it was funny or <laughs> it was a nervous laugh? <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I keep you up here close. I need your help on my stuff here. <laughs> anyway, I mean, that, that's an example. Uh, we do words and we do religious acts and stuff like that. But ultimately... And I'm using the word ultimately because, you know, God put us in Christ so that this could happen. A manifestation could happen. You know that, right? He didn't just put us in Christ so we could, you know, forever, you know, live as a baby wanting, oh, I want this and I need that. I'm hungry. I mean, you know, he's going, my God, you're 40 years old and still wearing a diaper and sucking your thumb spiritually. I need somebody to change my diaper. <laughs> Jim. <laughs> so, so the Lord lists the things. His hand shall be against every man. You know. Okay, how can your hand be against every man? Well, it means it's for you. You know, it's my hand is for me. But see, you we can't. We can't seem to see that or admit that unless God brings us to that. But we can't seem to do that. We have to see that our hand is against every man. I am Ishmael. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for using this terminology, but it's just, I know the Lord is trying to just have me say it. You know, I'm just using this person. And I'm just, you know, this person is, you know, there's all of this stuff. And, and it's not just one person, you know, it's motives. And so, so a person can thrive in, in a church setting for years and years and years and years and really be rotten to the core, but maybe some, one of the best church members. Can I get amen on that? And um, so ultimately, we, wanna, we want that reality. We want that reality of being, you know, in. We want the stabilizing reality of being in him. But it would be like, 
uh, it would be like if I had the ability to put someone in me so that I could protect them and save them, okay? So I put them in there, but they never want to conform to me. You, under you understand? So they're a foreign object. It's like a cancer. They're, they're a foreign object. Now, we're talking about Jesus, and we're talking about, okay, but they're not automatically, I mean, let's, let's put it this way. When they first go in, they're, they're at their worst, you know. But then a process starts happening. You start conforming to his image, and you start changing from Ishmael to having him. So you don't change to Jesus. You may conform to his image, but it's his image. It's him. He's our hope. He's, our, he's what we need. He is that. And so in here, you've you got, you know, it, it, see, we always draw it like a circle, but I remember years ago I said, I don't think that's the best picture. I said, the best picture I can think of is the vine and that we are his branches and the hope is that we draw the life out of the vine and into us. Okay, so what is this representing? We are in Christ right here, but he is in us right out here into the branch. See? We're, so how do you do that? Well, number one, you have to Ah, there you go. There you have it. You have to abide. But what does abide really mean? See, we go, I'm abiding. You know, well, you, you know, next time you ask somebody, you know, are you abiding in the vine? Yeah. What does that mean? Well, I've been a Christian for 20 years. You know, I tithe. I, you know, the abiding is I am... You know, see, here's the deal. I drew it like that. If we're just a little twig right here that you can't even see where the sap would go. But there is his life in there. <clears throat> then the goal, you know, would be more of Jesus, less of me. Okay, so then what happens is that it starts getting bigger. And, but all of the growth is life growth. It's not ministry growth. It's not, you know, <clears throat> it's not involvement growth, but branches are totally involved. You know what I mean? Because why? Because they're in a total environment. Amen? That's a total environment right there. <clears throat> okay. Now, let's, let's draw a brick building, okay, called the church, okay, let's give it a nice stained glass window so we all feel good when we go in the door, <clears throat> all right, I don't know why I'm off on this, I really don't, I mean, you would say, most of you are saying, well, you're off on this because I need it, I don't know, I'm just trying to follow the Holy Spirit, you go, you go in here, this can absolutely have absolutely nothing, this church building, with the vine. Nothing. Nothing. You can, you can do the church thing. And we think, we think God is looking down here and he's going, oh, you know, I just want my son to shine on this precious church. <laughs> you know. I just want them to be bathed in the glory of my son. He'd pretty much rather a lot of us be burned up by the glory of the son. You know, turn up the heat, Lord. You know, turn up the heat. That's, you know, it's not that you stop this. It's that you stop living this. You know, and you get back over here and you start saying, okay, I am in him. And, and as such, I have one goal, and that's not me to be against everybody else. Or, or me to be better than everybody else. Or me to be smarter than everybody else. Or me to be... How about that nature that went into the ground down here and died... 
the same nature that fills the vine, called vine life, fills us. Fills us. You see why I like this better for a in Christ thing? Because I think it's I think it's more the truth. And besides, Jesus never drew any circles. <laughs> and he didn't go in circles. That was the wilderness wanderers. <laughs> okay. But here we can we we really that church building, we really think, and not everybody has a building, but we think that all the things I'm doing and all of my dedications and all of my you know, even my prayers for, oh, Lord, the, the people in the pews. You know, we'd never say the people in the pews. We'd say, oh, Lord, the people. Bless the people in the pews. Let them get more spiritual and a raise. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so they'll tithe more. Uh, um, you know... Uh, Lord, those that are don't understand the movement of the Holy Spirit, help them to understand that, all this and that. You can, you can understand the movement of the Holy Spirit through the charismatic movement and the charismatic gifts, because they are. The word gifts means charis, which comes from the word, or where we get the word charismatic. Charisma, charismatique, is that what it is? Yeah. It's been a while since I've taught on... Don't taught on it that way. But it's, is it valid? Yeah, is it valid? Will it change your life? No, read it. I, yet I show unto you a more excellent way. Yeah, that's the end of the body ministry and the gifts. But I'll show you a more excellent way. You know, you can have all knowledge. You can be the smartest one in the fish tank. You know, big fish in a, in a small tank, you know. God, you know, big bloated fish eating up all of the it can get. Or you can be what he's made you to be, what he made you to be, you know. What he made you to be. And that doesn't, that doesn't start with ministry or or in a sense, I could say it doesn't start with prayers because most of our prayers are, you know, Lord, reveal your son in me. And behind it could be a million motives. You know, Lord, I just want to be more spiritual. I want to, when I say stuff, I want people to go, oh, my God. You know, oh. When Kelly speaks, I'm, t I'm teasing. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> you know, but you know what I'm saying. It, 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 it can't be that. We've got to go, Lord, you're trying to speak to me, not Lord, I want to, hear, I want to be able to speak the way Randy or Kelly or, or Bob and Joe or, you know, not that y'all are Bob and Joe, <laughs> and, uh, do. I want you. I want you the way you want to be in me. I want to know you. I want you. You, you, you. Well, what's your motive? I love, I love that when, the, when John the Baptist says, uh, Behold the Lamb of God. At that time he didn't say, Takes away this sin. Behold the Lamb of God. Two of John's disciples go, Hey, and they just walk off and they go, John's going, Hey, this ministry is of God too. You know, and they follow him. And then Jesus stops and turns around and says, what are you seeking? What's, what's your motive? What's your motive? Why am I emphasizing that so strong? Because he's more interested in your motive than what your plans are or what you think you're going to do. I'm following the lamb. Well, we want to see where you, where you live. Well, if you really want to see where I live, you're going to have to see me and live in me. But it's going to be different than, than what you think. Anyway, I'm going over. Uh, so let me, I barely got going here. See, this is, y'all need to pray to the Father about the Holy Spirit. 
Because this is why we can't get anywhere. I mean, I know, you know, I know y'all want to blame me, but you tell me if this guy doesn't just all of a sudden take over service. Huh? Okay, let's see. Father, we, we, we don't want to hear your words as condemnation. We want them to be wonderful words of life that turn into seeds that fill our being and from them flow out your son's life and bring forth fruit into these little twigs that we are, that we think we're great big branches. But we, we, we want the kind of son that won't be Ishmael. We want the kind of son that will be like the lamb, the slaughtered lamb. We want Jesus. We want what you want. We want to live for what you live for. We want to die for what you died for. We want to breathe in your atmosphere, in your environment. We want to take hold and, and be strengthened in hands to hold until we've held on strong enough that the vine life comes into our branches and flows freely and brings forth fruit. And we never for a minute think, I did that. We will say, that is you, Lord. I give you all the glory. So, Father, I just pray that your spirit, on the, on the wings of your spirit, to each of us, you have brought your heart. And it's your heart. It's not your commands. It's your heart. And maybe to have even seen again the strength of your love for your son compared to Ishmael. Lord, if we could only see the contrast and see our lives as you would see it, either goat or sheep, either Ishmael or Isaac, Father, that you would help us, help us to, to see such a contrast that we, like, like Ruth said, where you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. I, Father, that those words could be breathed out of us into your ears, Jesus that you could hear them and, and be blessed just to hear them knowing that something, something deep within us really wants you more than anything else. So make it real, make it whole, and do it without, do it in a way that we won't glory in it, in any part of it and take it to ourselves. Do it in such a way that from then on we'll know it is the Lord and we'll be, we'll be upset if we hear someone putting on us something that really just came from you. Father, we, we ask it in this church, not just this Bible school, this church and, and all those on Skype and, all those that hunger all over the world for you in a way that has been brought about by the Holy Spirit and, and circumstances, hard circumstances. Bring us in. Bring us in. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We got...